there we go. Now it's the correct channel. <coughs> Sorry for the wild goose chase if you saw the other link. Just checking to see if this other profile is actually working here. I did see something swim by a little bit ago. Oh, there's a little guy over there. This is a sample of water from Tenaya Lake in Yosemite uh, just a couple days ago. The water itself was very, very clear and nice and very cold, but it was hard to see anything basically floating in it. I couldn't get any algae or any little water plants, so I just basically did a, a blind water sample with a little bit of um, wet pine needles next to it in case something was clinging to the pine needles. So, we should see what's going on here. There's some guy swimming through here, but he just left the field. to be way zoomed in again which is not what I wanted <clears throat> see if I can reset the view quite the setting I wanted. Still too zoomed in. better much better scaling Got a different generative music thing tonight. This is a generative.fm. Has an electronic section that I chose some stuff from. This one's called 420 Hertz of Gamma Waves for Big Brain. <laughs> Hopefully your brain feels a little bit bigger after this. <clears throat> so let's see what we can find here. Now I've got it scaled better. fix this focus here it's not matching there we go there's a little guy might be a little too fast for closer work but I could try it nice Let's 
That was quite spinny. Very, very spinny. I put too much water in the slide again, so it's kind of sloshing around under the cover slip. But, and it's a nice little dude. Another really tiny one next to it. Lots of little tiny ones there. So all the little tiny spheres spinning around here. You kind of see little dots. Those are appear to be little flagellates. Their movement's a little bit um, linear and kind of jerky. <clears throat> or is this guy tumbling? Looks more like a ciliate. It's very directional. It turns on a dime. And uh, well, it's really cruising. Hoping to find an amoeba in this water section, but nothing yet. Just this one little ciliate cruising around. to another little guy there eating some debris looks like let me change the lighting scheme here a bit more of a 3d effect if i can here back. There it is. So if I can follow it. <clears throat> it's a little zoomed in. So hopefully it just doesn't make you guys seasick. But it really likes to tumble. Look at that tumbling behavior. Zoomed in too much, I better back it off a bit. Got a nice bouquet effect in here with the stuff at different layers on top of the cover slip, under the cover slip, under the slide. Looks like it's got a little bit of debris. So it's making a bouquet effect in the um, microscope, which is weird. There's a buddy with it. So we're cruising by. Ooh, there's. Oh, nice. That is a 
Very nice. I haven't seen one of these before, I don't think. Very fast, boxy looking ciliate. Doesn't look like a rotifer, it's kind of bizarre. Sorry if it's out of focus here, I think I have to adjust my uh, <coughs> microscope camera got out of whack with the overall focus of the system. fast. I'm not sure where the hell it went because I was playing with the dumb camera. There it is. Nice. Let's go to focus. Lost him again. Come on. Let's go, buddy. adjustment in the, <coughs> the settings here. Oh, that's not right. Why isn't it do the other flip? Camera, no rotation data. flip horizontal setting. There we go. That should be easier to do. Okay, now where'd he go? There it is. Now it's the video game again. I gotta chase them around. It's very active. <coughs> Excuse me. Boy, oh boy, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Lots of little guys here. Let's go to the bottom and see if I missed anything here. There's another one of those little squashed discoid things spinning around. It's also quite fast. What is that? Yeah, looks like a hair got in the slide. It's probably one of my hairs that fell off in there. You can see the root right there. <laughs> That's bizarre. That's definitely not a normal aquatic thingy. All 
kinds of debris here. So far, nothing else too interesting, just those few swimming guys. Nice bubble again. We're lucky we get something to do, uh, go for a ride like that one thing did the other day. <laughs> Let's see. It's a nice crystal. Something in the water. Well, that's a very small swimmers, too fast to chase. It's very active. Very unusual swimming pattern too. that big guy again very fast It's in a thicker part of water now. It's hard to focus on it. <clears throat> Let's get a different water sample. Maybe not so grungy. This one has a lot of junk on the slide. Let's try another one. I change the uh, music track here. to piano -y. Let's try another one here. There we go. This one's called Beneath Waves.
water bubble. search pattern again, going back and forth. So when they get stuck in a little pattern, just hover so you can get a chance to study them better instead of having to chase them all over the slide.
zoom in a bit. It's not going too far. <coughs> well, as soon as I say that, he starts to move more. Let's see if it comes back home here. This one's very similar to the one I got out of the flower pot at home. <laughs> now he's hung up on some debris there. Sorry, I keep saying he. This is an it, but we all fall into patterns. stuff as the water is receding, forming crystals. You see the water terminator dance around there. It's actually something swimming, but you can see it's the water moving as the water evaporates. And now you've got isolated crystals. Well, the water's left it behind. It's amazing how fast evaporation actually happens. This lamp does get pretty warm. I actually can't put my hand right on it right now. It's pretty hot. But the uh, incandescent bulbs provide a nice warmer natural light for microscopes, I think, than the uh, LED colder kind of bluish white lights. So there's a price to pay for having a, a nicer light. It gets more heat and less, uh, less slide time as it evaporates. <clears throat> there are techniques for adding water to a slide so it doesn't evaporate, but they're kind of hit or miss because of capillary action with the cover slip. I've tried many times and sometimes you either totally wash away what you're looking at and then it's hard to find it again and you end up having to move the slide away anyway. Or it just collects on the top more than it does between the pieces of glass because of the capillary action. This is it's squeezed so much there's not a lot of space for the water to go in there. So, almost like a suction. Alright, well I've seen enough of that waterfront. Let's go look at something else before... Yeah, you can see all this debris has created these kind of dry debris fields as the water's receded. Like you get a puddle on the ground, you get those different rainbow colors as the different solutes in the water have deposited out. But it looks solid here and plain because I have, I have it in an oblique lighting view.
stage that I should get It's a little more still. Let's see what we can do. And as soon as I do that, it moved again. Oh man, where did it go? Yeah. Oh, there we go. when they stop moving like this it's not very good for it I bet it's about ready to split like other ones have done on the, on the shows here before it stopped swimming might get ready to start lysing just uh, age or heat or whatever but it's still going but usually when they stop swimming it just kind of park like that it's 
Hey, Paul. Welcome back. Yeah, this one looks like some of the other ones we found on the streets before that weren't long for this world at this point, so... Instead of catching by accident like usual, I think this is uh, impending. Rammstein, hell of a show. Saturday night, LA uh, Memorial Coliseum. Open air concerts are the best. Um, the last few concerts I saw indoors were great, but the venue just was bad. It just the acoustics were bad, and arenas are the best. I go to Greek theater once in a while up here for concerts in Berkeley, um, uh, Oakland Coliseum as well. I saw Pink Floyd there many years ago, <clears throat> and then. Um, now Rammstein at the uh, former 1984 Olympic site in the LA Memorial Coliseum, which is in a bad part of town, actually. Uh, someone told me that, and I, of course, found out directly. As uh, I actually have a really good recording of several police cars at high speed with the sirens going, and you can hear the engines going as I'm waiting for my Uber to show up. So <laughs> it's quite a scene. Yeah, this guy is basically starting to distend a little bit. And looks like it's going to break at some point here. But Rammstein was a hell of a show. First time I've ever seen him live. And uh, of course, as usual, amazing pyrotechnics. Um, lots of fire. Oh, there it goes. Now he just exploded. That was more dramatic than usual, it just kind of all directions at once. But you can see the organelles are still intact. Those little spheres at the bottom, and a few of the ones up top, they're going to break down pretty soon as well. Well, actually, this happens a lot in humans. You just don't see it. <laughs> there are some disorders where this happens more often. But, um, yeah, this is essentially what happens when a cell dies, ruptures, and then, uh, you know, your body's uh, cleanup mechanisms, you know, the white blood cells and other kinds of stuff come around and clean up the mess. We have, um, it's a, 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 a funny-sounding name to just regular English speakers if you don't study science or Latin or that kind of stuff, but the technical term is um, phagocytosis, which is an eating of the cells, and uh, so that's exactly what the white blood cells do, the macrophages and stuff like that, they, they go and engulf either debris or um, invaders, protozoans, bacteria, various other nasties in your body. And uh, so your body has cleanup mechanisms for all the dead cells and such. Yeah, so there was another death of a cell. Not intentional, but it does seem to happen quite a bit. Oh, and there's the waterfront coming in to sweep it all away. As the cell, as the slide is dehydrating. There you go, no more trace of the guy. Looks like it never existed. Was great. The, the, they're very funny too with the the stuff with the baby carriage with the fire and the um, the guy coming out in the cauldron who's a keyboard player getting blasted by different sized flamethrowers. <laughs> Even that silly thing they did for the um, 
Deutschland song where they, they came out as the little dancing stick figures just to make it kind of whimsical. Uh, it was very clever. These guys are great. And they didn't disappoint. They played most of the classic hits, even the original Rammstein song, which is just such an awesome song from the David Lynch movie. Um, in fact, that's the only time I took the earplugs out the entire show because I really like that song. And I wanted to see what it sounded like without uh, without some earplugs, just because uh, I, I'm always taking care of my ears. But that's such a great song; I had to I had to listen to it un, undoctored. All right. Well, I think the slide is probably mostly drying up at this point. There's probably not much left to see. <coughs> Earlier on, I had another slide that had, this is water from uh, Tanai Lake in Yosemite. I collected a couple days ago when I was up there cruising around looking at nature and then nighttime doing the telescope stuff. I couldn't do a live stream at the telescope because the 3G, 4G, whatever, just wasn't good enough to do a stream. So I spent most of the time just doing visual stuff with my mouth open because it was, as usual, stunning up there. There's a nice crystal, crystal formation. So yeah, Jupiter is uh, at opposition right now, which means it's um, opposite the sun um, in our sky, so we have like the most time with it at night, and it's also incredibly close right now <clears throat> in its orbit to us. So it's huge, incredibly bright, and in the right conditions with nice clear skies and dark skies. It's, it's incredible image on a nice telescope. So I was able to watch a shadow transit of Ganymede across the disc on Tuesday night. I wasn't even ready for it. I hadn't looked ahead of time to see what was happening. I just happened to look at it and go, hey, there's a shadow transit. And I looked it up and it was Ganymede. And then of course my friends uh, were at Lick Observatory at the same time up in Mount Hamilton in California and uh, got some stunning pictures out of a 100 plus year old telescope up there of um, Jupiter with the great red spot and the shadow transit. It was pretty incredible. <clears throat> so at least somebody got good pictures of it, but I was able to enjoy their pictures, which is nice. It's a nice memory. Um, I think this slide is pretty much done for. Looks like it's all dried out. Still a bit of a waterfront, but not much. Everything else has stopped moving. So, I'll do one more from the lake, just to see what else I can find, because I never collected from that lake before. I was going to do some from the Merced River, which comes off the lake down into the valley out of Yosemite, but uh, by the time I left late at night, there was no time. I was just kind of on a mission to get home, because I was tired, had to work the next day. show last night because he got sick. I actually um, hanging out with him at Perfect Circuit on uh, Sunday, which is really cool. Hanging out there, talking about various things, looking at gear and all that. And uh, he seemed fine then, but I guess a couple days later he came down with something. Daphnia or a um, 
something similar. They have that very characteristic eye spot, and this is a pretty big object that broke up. see that red color very often in, uh, in protozoans or even uh, multicellular animals like a, like a copepod called cyclops. That might be the red eye spot of a cyclops. Focus it a little bit better. mistake so you have these angles coming out of nowhere <laughs> it's kind of fun geometric shapes hey Rob how's it going it's some good inspiration for some 3d work here you missed a cell dying a little while ago if you roll it back later you'll see It'd be an interesting thing to try to animate Probably not too hard with a particle system, and then some kind of a some kind of a script to uh, make the uh, external walls break apart, and then use a force to kind of blow away, blow the parts in different directions. Lots of uh, no, there's a cool water drop with uh, some trapped air bubbles. Except those people that uh, trichophobia, where you're afraid of holes and things. <laughs> and just so you can see what it normally looks like, this is in uh, oblique lighting, so this is this is the typical look you'd have. debris of things. Or some plant material. No amoeba, unfortunately, which I was hoping for. It's a nice 
nice bubble field here. spot there's that little spiky bit there that tapers off it for the Tanaya Lake samples from Yosemite. It was kind of interesting. Um, I also have some cool stuff I collected locally here. One is uh, some grass and a little bit of dirt from not watered freshly but still looked pretty good so I was just for kicks. Gonna see but I was just curious what could be on blades of grass and then throw a little dirt in the mix.
this kind of <clears throat> dark field or oblique lighting is great for uh, little tiny dancing things against the background. cell right there, even as a giant air bubble with some stuff in it. <laughs> Another one right above it. Nothing moving. Nothing, nothing, nothing. slide. Sorry about that. Worth a shot. What the hell. Now let's go on to one other thing I grabbed outside. There's a bunch of um, various kind of wood chip debris and then of course soil underneath it. I was always curious what the hell was in there. So there may be again nothing in here or maybe a whole bunch of weird things. It wasn't moist, but you never know if it's moist in the morning from something. But there's color to the liquid because of the wood chips. So. This is cool, this is a piece of plant debris that has little thorns on it. That's kind of fun. It's very small though, really, really small. that other one was. 
that's not too happy with this life. typical kidney like things I've been finding in the flower pot so could be same stuff that's in the dirt down below outside Focus just right, and this guy's so small. I'm gonna go in here, and it's not moving much. Get some nice close-ups so you can see the cilia dancing around here. Also, little visitors here. Unfortunately, I got this artifact in my camera again. Oh, there he goes. A nice view. All the dancing cilia. Uh, more 
critters in the background. That's fun. Okay, looks like I calmed down. Oh, now it was on the move again. All right. There's a, a German term for um, the biologists use for when the uh, the urge to migrate, the birds take off. They go Zuganru. <laughs> That's what this guy's doing. It's like I gotta get out of here. Uh, Zuganru. Really good appreciation for how small these guys are because this tiny little sliver of water into the cover slip and they still have all this movement to go up and down. I'm constantly focusing up and down in the Z just to maintain the, any kind of view at all. This this particular species is very mobile and very tumbly, so it's fun when they stop a little bit. You can really see that kind of peanut kidney shape. It's very odd asymmetrical shape. It's not even bilaterally symmetrical because as they tumble they're just kind of lumpy. Just try if I can get a dark field on this and give it a little bit of a pop. So you can see it kicking the debris there with the cilia. That's always fun. You get kind of caught up on some stuff. And if you watch the back end again toward the bottom, now now it's more 12 o'clock. There's a contractile vacuole going crazy. There goes the debris. Just shoot it off the sides of the cell. There goes the, the grain of suction. Now the debris goes the other way. Now it's hooked on debris again. Hey, Rob, how's the weather down there? You get uh, any change yet? Or is it pretty much consistent with last few months. really 
a good shot of the cell streaming. Let me change the lighting. It's hard to get them to focus just... Oh, there it goes. It just broke. See the debris there at the bottom? We just had a rupture. some other guys who have posted videos online of, of things swimming and they start breaking apart and the rest of them just keeps on swimming like nothing's happened but the tail end is already gone and disintegrated it's it's really bizarre it's like part of the cell just keeps going the rest of it is gone kind of like when insects can as they're being eaten by other animals they can actually lose a good chunk of their body and still maintain uh, some sort of life body's still moving, the legs are still moving, but uh, you know, half the body can be gone and they're still going. actually lasting much longer I think it's uh, the cell is trying to heal itself but it's might be on a, on a collision course with with death because um, usually when they stop moving and they just start rupturing it's usually a one-way ticket but there are ones that can um, there's some protozoans that actually nibble on other ones to get the contents and uh, some of these bigger ones like stentors they can actually be injured, spill out a bunch of contents, but heal and swim away. Maybe half or a third the size they were, but they're just okay. They just heal themselves, but the stuff they left behind is being eaten by the, the guy that made the hole. It's, it's kind of bizarre. It's like, almost like, uh, like some parasites that we can get that bite into our skin and suck out the juices and such. Thanks, I'll catch you later.
you paw. This thing is still going. I thought it was going to break apart based on the behavior, but it might just be taking a break from swimming for a while. <clears throat> the cell looks very healthy still, so you can see all the content streaming around like normal. I thought for a moment it looked like it broke a piece off, but it could have been some background debris. Looks like the slide is starting to dry. You can see the shift in the background there. Yep. It's starting to get shifted around. out of a slide usually before the water starts to go away badly.
Okay, so then I'm back in the dissecting scope now, also called a stereoscope. This is a bougainvillea flower. Just playing around with it. Everyone thinks these uh, purple parts on the outside of the flower, they're actually the bracts that encompass the small little flowers here. These are the flowers, these little guys inside. shot so you can see the anthers where the pollen is. That's a bougainvillea. Now we're going to look at <coughs> some lavender. It has this little uh, interesting leaves. furry and being one of these kind of plants is very glandular you get the very aromatic smell coming off of it you can see the little kind of glistening areas that are almost like sticky that's for the the scent it emits from those little guys let me flip over to another leaf area see the top side here. It's not quite as furry.
So you saw the lavender leaves. This is lavender flower. And I can't zoom out much on this one. It's so this is a dissecting scope, but it's still pretty high power. <coughs> so I got to move along with this. It had basically has these flower stalks that come out of it. And the petals are toward the top here. These kind of bracts that they have. It's actually not petals. And then the individual flowers come out of the bracts, kind of like the on the uh, bougainvillea. Um, move down the stalk, and you'll see these individual flowers peeking out of the bracts. And of course, they're very woolly and fuzzy as well. Besides the leaves curl over, they're pretty well adapted for hot environments. So the shiny top of the leaves, kind of waxy for reflecting the sun, <clears throat> and woolly underneath and curled over to protect the areas of the leaves where the stomata are, where the air intake comes in and out of the leaves for um, contributing to respiration and photosynthesis. So woolly helps keep moisture in. shiny waxy also keeps moisture in as well and helps the sun reflect off the leaf there's the woolly bits there also have the, kind of that shiny crystal look to them because of the um,
Hey Paul, thanks for hanging out. <clears throat> Sorry I had to take a quick break to get some food. I was on the dissecting scope looking at flowers now, so this is a <laughs> mystery flower I picked locally here. I'm not sure what it is, but nice little white flowers. Those are the anthers. both sexes in the plant so you can see in the middle is the uh, stamen where the female parts are right in the middle now these forceps are so big in here that central area that doesn't have the little colored bits is the female part like a little kind of a star formation on it so it has more surface area for collecting the pollen and, and doing fertilization <clears throat> as I go further down the stalk here there's some really cool little leaves that have uh, variegation on them it's definitely not a natural plant this is a cultivar where they've bred it for these um, variegation patterns on the leaves very interesting small leaves just a slight amount of fuzz on here nothing like the other one it was all woolly just slightly fuzzy specimen. Um, this is a different one, but has some similar flowers, a different color. Look inside the flower here. I can focus up. are to one side of the flower so when the insect crawls inside the ant the pollen gets deposited on the back of the insect and you can see all the hairs inside that flower it's very hairy look at that it's like almost like the uh, the worms in dune where it's just endless teeth going down the throat of the of the worm so all those hairs in there So I was showing the different parts of the flower here. Um, let me move the oh come on. Hard to do this with forceps and constant focusing. So you can see all the hairs in there. And then you can see the stamens there holding the anthers for the pollen. stigma which is the top of the female part of the flower so it's like, like I said before like a star shape um, so it's basically stamens hold the anthers the little pollen sacs that hold the, the male
male part of the reproduction for the flowers. So they basically, um, when they when they break into the stamen, they basically swim down just like sperm do in mammals. They kind of they they connect and, and go down the tube through the stigma into the style, which is a little stalk below the stigma. It's basically stigma style ovary is the order of the of plants, um, and basically the <clears throat> the plant sits on a the flower sits on a receptacle, and in a lot of fruits you're actually eating either a fleshy receptacle that's swelled up to contain the fertilized um, seeds, basically the embryos inside the seed, or uh, you're eating um, an, an enlarged ovary of the flower some cases um, to make the fruit if it's a large fleshy fruit like a, like an apple where you, you it's, it's a swelled up structure and then you cut into it and the, and the seeds are inside um, so yeah those are the basic flower parts there there's a really nice venation inside the flower there and sometimes they're colorful structures as nectar guides to kind of show insects where the nectaries are because you know insects don't do this for free they pollinate at the cost of the plant producing either a nectar they like to eat or drink or in some cases a pheromone created by the plant where it mimics some of the insect pheromones and in some extreme cases there are some um, stigma flowers that look even like a wasp female and produces a pheromone similar to a wasp female and the male tries to mate with the stigma which looks like it's basically like for lack of a better term a, a, a insect sex doll uh, we're starting to mate with the part of the flower and uh, tricks it and then it basically goes inside and touches Sorry, I got cut off. There was some noise in the background. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the, 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 in that case, the wasp actually mates with a stick stigma that looks like a female wasp, kind of, sort of, shape and color, and then the pheromone, the fake insect pheromone. So flowers can be really crazy. Uh, and definitely, nature is definitely X-rated. It's not PG and it's not R. There's some really crazy stuff out there in nature that, uh, you know, uh, they've already figured out all the tricks long before humans came along and, and did their own version of x-rated material <laughs> anyway so that's these little flowers and i'm not sure what kind they are but they're very attractive flowers and then you have these really nice um kind of pink stems and these leaves are not variegated like the other one i just showed but you can see the texture of the leaves they're a little bit dull potentially kind of waxy side <clears throat> what and the other side of the leaves you can see the venation and in this case it's a reddish color that plant there nice little flowers and colorful leaves on to the next one this is another one that was small shrub growing by some grass I'm not sure what this one is but again just some tiny tiny little leaves also curled down a little bit as the underside of the leaf. Let's flip it over here. You can see the top 
brighter green, more shiny, waxy. So again, another adaptation for keeping the leaves from drying out in the hot sun. And then as I go toward the top, these tiny little flowers. And these are so small, I don't know if I can use these forceps on them because they're kind of big and blocky. That's a cute little flower. <coughs> and then I have this sample of a strawberry tree. Um, Arbutus is the genus. And I forgot the, the species on this one, but again, very tough waxy leaves. Got some little spines on the edge of the leaves there. Almost like an oak leaf. Dull, 
stuff you would expect to find in a hot, dry climate like Australia or New Zealand. <clears throat> so that's bottle brush. It's gonna be fun to look at. And then, of course, I had to get a nice little agaricus mushroom that was on someone's lawn. I think this is agaricus compestris, but I'm, I'm not sure. Some of the mushrooms are hard to figure out. But there's the top. It's all kind of shaggy. Hold on a second. Oh. I'll be back in a few minutes. The uh, the fire department's coming. We had a beeping thing downstairs in the closet. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Just watch the mushroom here.
probably do another stream tomorrow. That sounds good. Have to check it out. Anyway, so here's the mushroom texture. It's kind of fun. Look at the kind of scales. Give this kind of a shaggy look when they start to mature and crack a little bit.
right, so let me, I was talking about spore prints basically, so yeah, you can see the color of the spores and also get these nice spore patterns on the bottom of the mushroom. Helps you identify the mushroom in a field guide. And then if you look at the side of it, it's kind of quirky looking.
now under this view, for example, you can see some like some soil grains here. yet, but you can see is that a nematode? Yeah, it looks like a dead nematode in there. Nematodes love this kind of stuff. There's a nematode there in the middle. the other samples I got from the potted plant nematode are often in various soils damp soils and stuff there's the body of the nematode <coughs> and then if I go further down here yeah Some good shots of fungal hyphae. I'll take a little piece of it there, kind of a little wiggly zigzaggy thing. That's a piece of the fungal hyphae that forms the whole network structure of the fungus underground. To the naked eye, it's just this white, fuzzy stuff. Um, just like when you get fur on your um, bread mold and stuff like that, that kind of furry stuff, that's just fungal hyphae growing in mass numbers. So to the naked eye, it looks like fuzz, but it's actually little tubules like this.
it's uh, sad news, but hey, you know, we want to find some good spots for some some good family events for good memories. Um, <clears throat> Monterey Bay is amazing. I mean, that's where I learned how to dive through just local dive shop classes, driving down there, um, and a different spot every time. The the shocking thing was the the final checkout dive. Was, I did the open water two certification through YMCA, not through now we are Patty. <clears throat> and um, good class, very safe, learned a lot of good skills. Um, but the last dive we did is called Maccabee Beach. It's off of El Torito and Cannery Row, right down from the aquarium. And it's a nice little spot. you got to watch out for rebar sticking up out of the water. You might poke yourself with it. But as long as you stay in the middle and try to go straight out, there's some really nice stuff to see there and, and sea otters nearby and stuff. And um, harbor seals hanging out, checking you out underwater. But um, the last, so it's two dives per day. It was a two weekend dive so yeah basically eight eight checkout dives for the final um thing I'm pretty sure that's right it's at least four it might have been eight but um anyway so you do two per day you get pretty tired because of the cold and the weight of the gear and stuff your body gets sapped of energy pretty quickly <clears throat> especially when you're just starting out but on the last dive coming in with my dive buddy in class we were doing the crawl you're supposed to do not just walk up out on the beach and fall over if you're off balance and as we're crawling <coughs> as we're crawling you heard all this action like people screaming and pointing and waving their arms and we look back and uh, there's some guy they had pulled up out of the water who most likely either was by himself like he's not supposed to be either had trouble with his uh, buoyancy jacket or his um weight belt and he probably shot up too fast and he embolized the pressure air in his lungs and uh, in shallow water it could just be uncomfortable but in deeper water as the air expands you can actually blow out part of your lung which is really bad which is probably what happened to the guy and so my so my instructor he was like Baywatch he just goes trucking out there and with some other guy helped pull him on shore and it looked like he was flailing on the way in but by the time they brought him in he was not moving and is kind of purple and they started doing CPR and the ambulance came and all the tourists are going crazy because it's Cannery Row full of people all the time and uh, I'm looking at my dive buddy and I'm like hmm, this is our last dive this is a hell of a thing to see on your last dive and if you're sure you want to keep doing this for safety reasons and stuff but it didn't stop me. I loved it so much I kept doing it. But it did make you think twice um, next time you go out about checking everything. Always be careful. Um, don't get separated. Don't hit your belt by accident and pop up too fast. And all that kind of behavior stuff. And um, it was pretty scary. A real eye opener. So um, it, uh, it, and unfortunately, a couple of days later, I read the newspaper, the guy had died. So he was probably just about dead when they pulled but he was on respirator for a couple days and then he didn't make it in the local Monterey newspaper so it's kind of sad but you know that's what happens it's it's a, it's a risky behavior it's a risky sport and um, if you're not getting attacked by sharks in some terrible part of the water um, you could be something else bad could happen to you so you never really know so let me try to get this
gradient there, causing some motion. Not seeing any movement. All kinds of debris, because I had like soil in here and stuff. So there's all kinds of chunks and crystals and such. are extremely common. too choppy either. I, I can get out on the water all day and I can see sick, but some people really can't handle it. So I've been on some really rough seas to do whale watching and bird watching and even some deep sea fishing when I was younger. And uh, people are just throwing up left and right over the boat. And I just being, being a, a it's funny, being a kid who used to get motion sick in the car on long trips. Um, but still able to ride roller coasters and uh, sea lakes no problem and all kinds of stuff like that it's kind of funny that um, either I grew out of it because um, I can read the car now like I could when I was a kid on long trips <clears throat> but yeah no problem with ocean stuff and um, all kinds of um, fun things with uh, roller coasters and thrill rides so this one I took pieces of the gills and wet one and I kept a section of it dry just in case it works here. Just to compare a dry mount and a wet mount just to see what the, the gills look like. Might be able to see some spore action. spore. 
shoulders. as many as you expect because this mushroom's been out for a while so it's already dropped tons of spores over probably several days or even a couple weeks but yeah all kinds of little spores in there so that's the wet mount and nothing swimming in there Four prints, that's what you're seeing in hundreds and hundreds of numbers or more. And they just keep producing them until the fruiting body basically dissolves the too much moisture or just dries up either way. So that's the, the, the mushroom's main job is just get those damp spores out there. And they're also tasty as long as they're not poisonous like this one is. This agaricus might be pretty nasty. I'm, I'm not sure which which one this is, but as you know, it's never a good idea to eat wild mushrooms unless you really know what the hell you're looking at. Because one could kill you instantly, one could kill you over several days, destroy your liver in the process, or one could just make you really, really sick and wish you were dead. Um, so I'm, I've been out with a few people who know what they're talking about. I, I took some mycology classes in college, but I forgot most of them. Materials is so much material, but they don't teach you about edible stuff so much as just the general biology and ecology of mushrooms and other fungi. <coughs> but some are obvious, like chanterelles are obviously, you know, pretty obvious with the way their gills work. They have um, a totally different structure than this type of gill and morels are pretty obvious and um, some of the other cup fungi are potentially edible but they look weird <clears throat> so yeah there's the uh, the little mushroom that's mostly what I had for today look at all the flowers and the mushroom and the water from tonight lake in Yosemite samples from grass and from some wood chips outside in the dirt so I think that's pretty good show's been going now for yeah not super long I think my record was like four and a half hours this is about three hours a little over three hours so probably a good time to stop
watching the replay. Some of this went for a while because I took a break. The fire department showed up for some weird noise downstairs on a panel, and also I went to take a break to eat for a bit. So a couple of shots that are pretty static where you can still see some cool things, but they don't change for a while and I'm not talking. So I will put chapter stops as usual in the notes afterward. So on the replay, if you just want to jump around to the chapter stops, it helps a lot because nobody wants to watch a uninterrupted three or four hour stream unless it's constant music and performance or whatever. <clears throat> so let me check the chat one more time for it. comments you know what you like what you don't like I got, I got a thick skin so constructive stuff's always good it's just, just always free form I don't have a plan usually and uh, this ambient music stuff I found on the web just various web pages playing ambient uh, you know um, randomized music kind of helps give a background bed because I don't have time to make hours of music right now but um, so, you know, if you have any more questions or other things you'd like to see on the stream, please feel free to ask questions, uh, comments, um, questions about something I said. Maybe I made a mistake. You know, when you do these long form things, you see a lot of dumb stuff. So I like to be accurate with my science because that was my first love was science long before I got more into art stuff and music stuff and all that. So, um, and it's easy to forget this stuff. So I may have misspoken or said some silly things along the way. <laughs> So feel free to check me if you want and ask questions or get clarifications on stuff. But uh, this is totally off the cuff. I don't have a script or outline or anything. So um, I'm trying to throw out terms and concepts over time that I remember on the spot and occasionally, you know, make mistakes and say goofy things. But um, the important thing is to have fun and to learn. And uh, I'm doing my best to try and give you stuff that's accurate and not, you know, I know how hard it is for people the first time and if it's learning correctly it's hard to unlearn it and learn it the correct way um, which is why Wikipedia is usually frowned upon because often it's not fact checked but if you do know certain subjects and you look at Wikipedia there are some amazing pages on there written by people who really know what they're talking about and have researched it really well so it's not a good research area if you don't know the subject but if you do know the subject it's really good for filling in the blanks sometimes so anyway Thanks again, and I will see you guys soon. Feel free to leave comments. Okay, thank you. Bye.